do you know what I've been thinking about on and off this week? I was like, if this was, if, if, if we were in a shonen anime, not like a battle anime, but just like a, a show for kids, I reckon that <laughs> <laughs> Rob would be the protagonist. Uh, I would be um, like the mentor. Right. And then you would be like his best friend. You'd be like Joey or... Um, right, right, um, yeah. I don't know. I know about You'd be like, not Krillin, maybe like Piccolo. Yes, I'll um, take Piccolo's, Piccolo's position. And the way that the arc would go is, um, so so Robert comes in, yeah, and he's like, I want to do a podcast. Look at me, and then uh, I come in and I'm like, all hardened and chiseled, like not like tough, yeah. but like I'm like got an eye patch on, right. like I've like I've seen stuff, like if. <laughs> You've podcasted before. I've podcasted before, <laughs> it's yeah. Not as easy as you think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And then, yeah. Yeah. and then there's a training montage and you're like you are like, Yeah, you can do it and like, yeah, as well. <laughs> right, right. And then um and then what happens is the podcast starts to take off. Um yeah. and then I get jealous and then we have to have a confrontation oh, yeah. where Robert kills me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's Naturally. Like, it's, no, I'd defeat you in the you start your own rival podcast. Yeah. To yeah. be like, I can get back into the game. <gasps> oh, I've got I've got the chop still. I'm not past it. <laughs> I can show this young whippersnapper that experience means more than passion. And then you start your rival podcast, and it actually gets pretty good as well. And then we're rivaling, we're battling out. And then the way that it's animated is, uh, it's probably like you know you're not recording at the same time, but we're speaking, and then like sound waves are yeah. crashing into each other, <laughs> making explosions, destroying right. houses and shit. But if, eventually, I'm defeated. Um, <laughs> you're and then, coming out of the It's just like you'd like. Your intro to your, your yeah. podcast. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> and the numbers go up. <laughs> I don't know. That would be. I don't think that there's any. Po- I don't think there's any anime like any genre about podcasting. But there's, there's probably because it's not as big in Japan. I really like the idea of an anime podcast where it's just like this room. Just an us <laughs> anime style, <laughs> kind of like the Ricky um, Gervais show, but but higher budget. Yeah, with high, way, way higher budget style. and more anime, like anime, anime style. Yeah, yeah, more anime tropes and things like that. There's yeah, that last episode would have been good for it with when I started talking about Yu Gi Oh and, and Joel started having a mental breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It would have been all <laughs> <laughs> oh, those, those anime noises that they <laughs> make <laughs> randomly when they're just like. <laughs> <laughs> Some crazy eye expression or something. <laughs> Some, something on his forehead. Intro music, I guess. <laughs> Greetings, friends and foes, and... Welcome along to Keep Your Friends Close and Your Animes Closer with me, as always, your anime FIFA boy, Joel. And me, as always, uh, not wishing that he knew more about football to make a irrelevant reference. Can uh, you kick a ball? Uh, I am, I am, whoever, whoever is the, the listener's idea of the worst player in the FIFA tournament this year. I'm that guy. He's the guy who used, he picked up the ball in the middle of the I'm field. Your, <laughs> <laughs> I'm your anime that guy, Robert. Um, I'm your anime soccer, Curtis. Oh, oh no. no. Yeah, yeah no, you can't no, play so soccer many. and FIFA. Yeah. We've just lost all our UK listeners. They just <laughs> what do they call it? it? They just all turn it off. It's football. It's not football, it's soccer. Mm. It's football, because you kick it with your foot. Mm. But it's football. It's well, gr- gridiron definitely isn't football because yeah, he's throwing it. He's throwing <laughs> it makes no sense. It makes no sense. It's gridiron. <laughs> um, this is a podcast where we talk about uh, the anime that we watched in the week and sometimes other stuff. Uh, this week we watched uh, some other stuff, but also Violet Evergarden episodes six, no, episodes seven, eight, and nine, uh, and we're going to talk about that. Uh, but first, last time on Kif Kayak. I feel like I'm getting pretty good at doing that voice. <laughs> <laughs> um, we we had some uh, back and forth about why you guys thought that um, Princess, whatever her name was, was 10 years old. 
uh, at the time of her age of consent, and yeah. I, I just I just thought she was it, it wasn't specified. And oh she was yeah, just yeah, a random yeah. Age. Uh, it turns out I was watching the dubbed version, and you guys were watching subbed, so we worked that out. Yeah, um, they listed it, it in yeah. the English version. Yeah, in the, <laughs> in the subtitle, it's, it specifically says, I, "I'm I'm ten years old when the war started, and now I'm fourteen and I'm about to marry a guy." <laughs> in the English version, they were like, "Let's make it a bit more ambiguous." Yeah. <laughs> um. Uh, and oh, and uh, and we worried last time that the rest of Violet Evergarden was going to continue in the exact same formula for every episode, but uh, we learned these episodes that they're slightly different. Yeah, it didn't. It was pretty good. I also want to follow up <laughs> with. Uh, so we, I, I kind of lost my mind a little bit last episode. <laughs> Robert triggered something primal <laughs> in me. The, the Yu-Gi-Oh was uh, too much for you. Um, I, I didn't know, but apparently there was an original Yu-Gi-Oh TV show in 1996, not the 2000 one that I grew up with. Um, and it gave me an aneurysm, but <laughs> I, I sorted it out. Because it was a reboot when they did it. It wasn't just like a sequel or anything. No, no, no. Yeah, it was on. a complete it was reboot. A reboot. So, that, so there was elements of the stuff that I was saying in the originals uh, that, that never left Japan that was like, this is the same, but completely different. Yeah. And I, and I like it. It um it really fucked with me. I had I had no idea what was happening. You were you were so accurate that I knew you weren't lying, but I, I couldn't think of what it could what could be happening. Oh man, yeah. Um, there was an original series, never left Japan, and then they rebooted it for the West, like four years later, and took out all the child child prostitution references and things like that. Right, yeah. right. It's uh they tidied it up a little bit, but not much. I rewatched that first episode. We'll talk about it later. Um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, do you have any follow up, just quickly? Do I have any more? Follow up? Follow up? Yeah. From last time? Yeah. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. Um. <laughs> <laughs> or any time before that, you know, you could have been holding on to some deep secret. Just deep secret. I actually really liked DBD. Yeah. <laughs> deep um, no. Moving on. <laughs> into Violet Evergarden a bridge episode 7 title doesn't have a title doesn't have a title just two quotes aka the playwrights episode <laughs> um, so it opens with the dolls watching a play all but Violet uh, and Violet they go back home and say oh that play was amazing and Violet is reading the play instead um, she's doing research for her ne- next job as a typewriter. Uh, it's it's for a it's for the playwright. Um, cut to Catalia asking. Uh, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Uh, Ka- Catalia or something. She asks the president, "Have you told her about the general yet?" And he says, "No, not yet." Um, Violet arrives at the playwright's house and he's a drunk shut in. Um, and she sort of puts her hand on his hand and says, "Please don't drink while we work." <laughs> Makes me uncomfortable. And he's like, oh, make me some dinner. I want some pasta. And she's never cooked before and she's never even cracked an egg before. This was, this was weird. Um, <laughs> so she goes off and finds some food and, and learns how to cook for him. Uh, and then she hides his booze um, and he starts to dictate the play for her. This is the first one he's written for kids, so he's a little unsure of himself. Violet gets really into it and starts to emote over the protagonist. And it's kind of one of the first times we've seen real emotion from her. Uh, and it's... Um, sort of an empathetic response to the to a fictional character. She uh, she borrows a pretty blue back parasol that she sees lying around his house, and her, him seeing her with it um, reminds him of his dead daughter Olivia. He starts to get angry at her for, for borrowing the parasol, uh, and then he forgives her. He tells her his sad story of his daughter's battle with some terminal illness um, and how she died, and Violet cries uh, at the story. And then he agrees to start to finish his play. And he uses the parasol as a plot device in the in the end of the play. Uh, he asks Violet to walk towards him holding the parasol so that he can visualise how, how to end the play. And she jumps in a lake. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, uh, the play is finished, so she gets on a boat and she leaves. Uh, and when she's on the boat, she lets the mask drop for the first time. And she, we see her crying and shaking and just going into a real uh, breakdown. Um, her actions during the war are now starting to haunt her. Mm. She's met off of the boat by by the same old lady from episode one, uh, Miss Evergarden, um, who tells her that Major Gilbert's dead, um, just lets it slip, but was never found, uh, but is presumed dead. And she's like, <laughs> triple, agent. <laughs> triple agent, I know, right? Triple agent. <laughs> his body was never found, but his tags were, uh, and he was exploded in rubble, so presumably he's dead. And just like, no, it's not true. He was never found. That means he's alive. Yeah. And that ends episode seven. 
Episode 8. Title? No title again, except this time it's Japanese quotes, which look different to Western quotes. <laughs> oh, I see. Um, <laughs> okay, the flashback episode, the first one that doesn't centre around some random in his sub-story. Yeah. Uh, we see a flashback of uh, the handover from Deepfried to Gilbert. Uh, Violet's in a tizzy. Uh, she incapacitates a guard <coughs> trying to see Deepfried. Uh, back in present day, sorry. Uh, she's freaking out, saying, "Listen, your, your brother's dead. You can't. You can't be. You can't tell me he's dead." Um, Deepfried agrees to actually meet her after she sees it, after he sees that it's pointless. His gu- his guard's trying to keep her out because uh, she'll just murder them all. Um, uh, Tits McGee berates the president for telling Violet about Gilbert's death um, and then flashback uh, Violet's around 10 years old and she's at Gilbert's mansion he's taken her home to look after her uh, Gilbert gets ordered to use her as, as a weapon and he's kind of more in the, in the frame of mind that she's a 10 year old maybe I should leave it's, her alone it's so bizarre yeah we'll get back to that uh, takes her. he takes her to the front line as ordered but he tries to leave her behind on a, when he goes on a sneak mission uh, she surprises him by coming anyway and taking out the guards really quickly, like a proper stealthy assassin. But she does kick over a lot. And then she, you know, she <laughs> says fire the forest, which is not so stealthy. Um, present day, uh, Violet hikes miles towards the ma- Major's mansion and she sees his grave. His, uh, his, his butler lady takes her to his grave and says, I'm sorry, dear, he is dead. Um, I did think that she was going to, like, dig the grave up, yeah, check the coffin, well. and then there'd be nothing there, nothing. there, and then she's like, triple agent. <laughs> triple agent. Because <laughs> there's a note in there <laughs> which leads you to a safe, which has like, got a puzzle box in it, and it was going to be, like... A whole Da Vinci Code situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, back into the flashback, um, he's teaching her how to read and write. Um, it's it, it, it leads ah. into the opening, ep- opening flashback of the very first episode when she's walking through the market. She sees the brooch and buys it and what have you. She learns the word beautiful and says that his eyes are beautiful. Um, the uh, continuation of the flashback, the lieutenant colonel, pr- colonel president guy arrives and he shows camaraderie with Gilbert and that's when he meets Violet. Uh, there's, they go into a big assault on like a fortress city that the enemy are occupying and Violet just goes in there and she kicks ass. Uh, they take the city. And then the major gets shot in the face? Question mark. Yeah, yeah he gets shot in the eye. eye. Yeah. Goes right yeah. through his stuck in his eye. And and his yeah, brain, it doesn't probably. <laughs> yeah, I know he gets yeah. shot no, in he the eye, but caught, his <laughs> eyes are closed. He <laughs> caught it with his eye. Yeah, he blinked <laughs> right at the right time. <laughs> yeah. uh, episode nine title. Violet Evergarden. So self-titled, like uh, like those bands that make their self-titled album. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, they they take a bi- pipe bomb, <laughs> just like take a pipe bomb, and her other arm sloughs off. Um, yeah, that was weird because it. <laughs> sure, it's like a weird like um video game radius where like only her arm was yeah, in the radius. Right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. thing that hurt. Hitbox. Um, then it's the scene from before where she's trying to drag him out with her teeth. Um, she's uh, he's trying to get her to piss off, and then he sees an explosion like rolling down towards them down the stairwell, and he pushes her aside and gets the brunt of it. Present day, Violet is uh, same same location, searching through that rubble, trying to find his body because that's the last place she saw him. The president arrives um, and says, "Hey, it's useless. He's dead." Uh, then there's a flashback of uh, Gilbert asking the president to take care of V if anything was to happen to him. Uh, the president gets her to get into the car to go back home, uh, and on the way, there's a city that's been closed due to some sort of anti-peace terrorists. Well, I, I, again. Bearing the plot through, triple agent. Right. He is the leader of the anti peace. He's he's been he's been brainwashed. He's on the other side, now. The other side now. I saw that and I was like, there he is. That's he's it. In that city. He's in the anti peace. Oh, man, they only gone down that road earlier. Um, back to the post office. Uh, Melon's now worried about Violet, but Eggs Benny is more bothered about some missing letters. Um, the dolls care about her. Violet goes back into the place of the last battle, and he's he's there. Gilbert's there. He's right where he died, but he's all um, all clean and not dead. Uh, like and then seconds. he and then he gets accused uh, accusatory, if that's the accusatory. right accusatory accusatory of her, and like you should have saved me and all this. And then he starts bleeding from his eye again, and the blood's tripping down the stairs, and it's really hor- horrifying. And then she wakes up, and she screams, and she runs around destroying the room, smashing the lanterns and stuff. And then she tries choking herself out with her robot hands. Uh, it doesn't work, um, and she just sobs and cries for him. Uh, a letter gets delivered to V, and she helps Santa deliver the rest of the letters. Um, then he she... is Santa. He had a red yeah. sack this episode. Yep. Yeah. That made me pretty happy. <laughs> big old fellow with a big white beard and delivers things in a sack. Um, she helps him deliver the rest of his letters because he's working the night shift. 
Uh, and then she goes home and reads the letter that was delivered. It's, it turns out to be from the other dolls, uh, particularly Iris and Erica, who are worried about her, but say, hey, you take as much time as you want, and then you'll be welcome back whenever. Uh, she. We're not the bosses. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> we don't run this company, but we, you definitely We're, have a place here. We assume, yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, the drunk brother from a few episodes ago comes back in and says, hey, thanks for uh, writing that letter for Lucullia, um to me. It helped me turn my life around. Now I want you to write a letter from me to her. Uh, she does. And then there's like weird end, uh, um, a weird semi-ending with long credits, like it's the season finale. It did feel me. like the season finale, yeah. Because yeah. um, it kind she... of resolved a lot of things this episode. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyways. it did feel weird. That's um, because... Triple Agent art coming up anyways. <laughs> it felt like when I was watching Bacano and I got to the end of uh, episode 13, which actually was the season finale, but I knew I had three more and it confused me that it was a season finale. And and so that's what I started to think about this one. I was like, is it a, was this the season mm. and then the rest that we've got to watch are OVAs? Mm. But, no, there's only yeah. one OVA. There's 12 episodes and then an OVA. Um, she goes to the president sort of after these credits uh, and she asks if she has any right to be living. Mm. That's very sad. And that's the end of the ones we watched. First thoughts? Um, I like these a lot more than the last week's. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Even the um, even the one with the playwright. Mm. I don't know why, but I really like dad stories. <laughs> <laughs> really, they really make, they really get to me, even though I don't have kids or anything. Um, but yeah, I was I was also cool as well. I was like, this guy's a cunt, and then it was like oh, his daughter died. Though. <laughs> his daughter died. <laughs> um, no, I I enjoyed them a lot more. Um. They went without their issues, but um, heaps, heaps better. Yeah, I yeah, I I liked it more. Um, I think it's just, I think it's just weirdly organized. The, the pacing is off. The, no, the 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 episodes are all, all organized weird. That we, why have we had like, what is it, four, five episodes of uh, showing us with her being a robot with randoms and their oh. sub stories, and then all of a sudden we see some actual story development of getting getting us to actually care about Violet and who she is and where she's from and stuff and mm-hmm. they're all like put at the end like to if they'd have spaced them out if they'd have been like Replacing. here's what mm-hmm. Violet's like with the people in, in her immediate vicinity here's what she's like with Erica and Iris and then like a flashback episode of oh shit this is actually who she is and what she's going through and then back to present day with her still being a robot um, yeah, yeah. and she interacts with a couple more people that now we actually care a little bit more about maybe because we care about Violet and we see how what certain other characters say might affect Violet because we know a bit more about her past. If we'd if we'd have put episode uh, eight b- before episode five, which I think was the princess one, mm. then when she's interacting with the princess about love and age differences and stuff, would would've have had a little context. bit more context. Um, and then we have the princess and the Le- Leon one and the playwright, and then episode nine. And I don't know. It's, it, I think it just could have been organized so that it made a more compelling well, story. Well, even. Erica and Violet, um, not Erica, Erica and Iris, um, writing that letter. Like, we haven't, apart from the, with Violet, mm-hmm. and I think Erica really didn't, like, nothing happened with no, her. Yeah, I can't remember. I was trying before this episode to try and remember what happened to Erica. L- literally, she didn't really spend any time with Violet. Violet wrote a letter for her, and she did a bad job, and that was it. And you can assume that it happens off screen, but that's just bad storytelling. Um, we can assume that Violet spent more time with them and they learned to tolerate her as well because yeah. it's not like she's been better until yeah. the past couple episodes she's yeah. still very robotic it's it's weird and i mean they're being i don't know they're being kind but it, i think it's it also a little odd. bit a, a little bit confused about what who's the main character is it about violet or is it about the people who interact with violet and their story because until the uh, flashback episodes it seemed to be just about the people that she interacts with and not about violet because there really wasn't any yeah there wasn't enough development for Violet for it to be about her and then all of a sudden it's now about Violet and we see her flashbacks and we see her breaking down and we see her going through this post traumatic stress um, and that's that's in, that's that's compelling that's that's something you want to watch and mm. learn more about Violet it kind of felt like um, episode four five and six were just kind of like fuller stories to make twelve episodes mm. um, <laughs> yeah but they were used at the end of episode nine when uh yeah there were some like cutbacks and yeah like, the lieutenant, she, she, she asked the lieutenant am i am i allowed to keep living because the major's not and he was like yeah you are because you know you're alive and you've made a positive impact on the people that you've been around and they do little cut cutaways to what the people who she's written for are right. up to now yeah 
the the weird child marriage and that <laughs> that whole business. The playwright has got his play going on. Yeah. The guy who yeah, was we, in, see, we, we see, see who, what they're all up to now, and they've all progressed. Hot. And yeah, yeah. yeah, so that is what it's supposed to be for. But I think what Robert said is good. If we had just seen a little bit more of Violet interspersed between that, yeah, we cool. might have enjoyed it more. And yeah. another thing I I don't like about it, like heavy handed, and like instead of using sort of hints and subtleties, like for instance, uh, I think in episode uh, eight, the first of the flashback episodes. Um, when we see the handover and Gilbert's uh, reluctant to use her as a weapon because she's just a kid, and then he goes to his mate <laughs> or his, 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 his whatever, what would it be, his, a, his, a general his, or whatever yeah. it is, um, and the guy instead of being like, yeah, oh subtleties and trying to hint that you should be using this kid, he literally says, and I'm quoting, "Just exploit this orphan girl as much as you can, <laughs> yeah, and then dump her on the battlefield when she's no longer of use to you." I was so crazy. That's like That's... you could you couldn't have said that in a way that people would actually have said it. Who yeah, the fucking it would would speak like that. The th- like it's. Because there's still, I don't know if they'll resolve them in this episode or in season three when she's in the dairy farm and wherever she came from comes back because she has to have had training. Yeah. yeah. Like she existed before she was 10. Maybe yeah. she didn't, maybe she's a test tube. <laughs> um, but we don't know. She's um, grown in a lab. But yeah, you, I don't yeah, know. She, I, she is human. Eh? No. <laughs> no. She's no. cow, which is why it's <laughs> she's not because I guess the way they talk about her as a weapon is, is yeah. like machinery, like yeah. Um, but is it, it's more of a um, like a metaphorical thing, like yeah. the, I know, using yeah. people as tools. Yeah, no, I, 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 I get, I get that. It's just like <laughs> why? Yeah, I guess, I guess that's the whole backstory thing. Like, why is it just her? Where's this like? army of children and soldiers <laughs> who have been yeah expertly I, trained I, yeah. I i i predict that we're not going to find out i don't think we're going to find out anything i, I didn't think that it wasn't important um, <clears throat> it might also be like that the fact that before she like it's only to, this story's only told from the southern uh southern union's perspective or whatever they're calling themselves um and so before they interacted with her on the battlefield she didn't exist to them sort of thing and so we don't get to she existed from so I, I don't feel like they're gonna tell us where she came from or why she's so highly trained at a 10 year old um yeah it's i don't know it's unfortunate but <laughs> I, I i found it interesting that um uh Katlia in episode seven asks the president have you told her about the general yet <gasps> and then in episode her? eight when she's found out about it she goes to him and he's like why did you tell her about the general i don't like Katlia. I, I couldn't understand oh, it also there's like a really like a d plot of um benedict is wearing high heels now yeah yeah it, it he, got, yeah i don't know yeah he hurts his ankles because he's now wearing high heels but he wasn't wearing them earlier i think maybe this is stuff that's um, coming from the the light the, novel the, yeah yeah <laughs> we just not because i read that uh how, how are we saying her name Kat, catlia catlia i read that she in the novel is um tries to be like a big sister to uh violet i could see that yeah yeah okay so that's the issue with uh adaptations is they cut out a lot of stuff but then the stuff that they choose to keep in is really weird right like it it feels like lip service to an existing thing instead of being its own thing yeah yeah because that hasn't come across no really throughout yeah the story I'm not enjoying it i was really disappointed with how she lost her arms i was expecting that to be something good <laughs> just I was, dropped, off. dropped off she got i was like yeah i was expecting it to be like she she uh th- there was a grenade thrown at them and she was like no and she grabbed it and she like threw it away but as oh, she's like throwing it away it blow, blows up enough to blow off her arms or something yeah. i thought it was going to be something cool and epic and instead yeah. she just gets one of them shot off which mm. is ridiculous and wouldn't happen and then the other one she takes the full brunt of a, <laughs> a pipe bomb and then later on, it's not even right immediately <laughs> after. She's like dragging the the major uh, the, the major away, and then her arm just falls off. Yeah. It was so like anticlimactic. Detaches, yeah, it detaches and, and just falls out. I don't know how that happens from an, a bomb <laughs> being thrown on you. <laughs> it, yeah, it was really it was really a, a letdown. And no, st- it it. I think the main point of contention that I'm having with the show is it's um, it doesn't know what it wants to be. It doesn't know whether it wants to be more fantasy or more grounded. I feel like it should have leaned into leaned into being more fantastic mm, with right. the war and stuff and her being like a robot it's just because it tries right. to be really great it tries to be because you can have a fantastic story with really grounded characters mm, yeah but too much of the things that are happening aren't fantasy enough for me and that maybe yeah. that would help with some of my what do you opinions. what do you yeah. think uh, would have changed in the story if she wasn't given rubber arms. What? What if she? What Nothing. If she just... It's just. It's just purely aesthetic. 
Is it just like a oh cool little diff- so design. something different about her that she's got yeah. robot arms? It's a yeah. conversation starter. She's got robot arms instead of she's that show, she's I, just, blonde. I think that's I think, it's I, I, I think that's, that sort of shit is like why why have it in there if it's not going to play some sort of role? What, it, it does. It starts conversation and she removes the gloves and people are like, what the fuck? And she's like, but the I same can thing, still do my job. But the same thing could be said for if she had severe, <laughs> severe burns on her hands and then it removes that fantasy element that Joel's talking about being I would like that because then she would expect that would be cool. Was not yeah. reality. We would yeah. understand more of how hard it would be for her to retrain her arms to yeah. be able to use them again but her, we have no concept of how hard it is for you to use robot arms <laughs> yeah, they, she's they don't, she, she knows how to yeah, use she, she, yeah exactly she can type and she can write and it's all good it seems like her nerves are hooked up to it and she is good to go but burns I like that that's a yeah, good change I, 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 yeah I think that's um, maybe it comes into it I, I just I feel like it's something that was put in there unnecessarily and it kind of convolutes the story a bit they do well on the emotional um emotional points i don't no. know like i i there are some points that land um like the playwright with um <sighs> his daughter and um his and closure because Vi- Vi- violet <laughs> looks good. like his daughter it's good yeah she jumps yeah. into the lake that was a little bit silly <laughs> yeah. i i i think sometimes it's like it, it, it is simple but like I don't know. They hit these moments somehow, and and maybe maybe it's just music and and lighting Swap. and yeah, just Trying like you. yeah, just the silliness. But I I kind of connected to um um the Colonel Lieutenant Hodgins mm. um you know towards the end there when because throughout throughout these shows Violet saying that she's burning and it's some sort of metaphor yeah. for your past <laughs> sins. <laughs> You're covered in birds. You say, no, it's just my arms. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. the president um, a few episodes ago says, uh, you're burning, you're, you're, you're on fire. And she's like, no, I'm not. I don't know what you're talking about. And then this... But, and then she goes to the playwright and she like learns empathy. Yeah. Um, and learns to feel at, like how her actions have affected other people. And so... At the end of that episode, she apologizes to Mrs. Severgarden for like her comments to mm, her. Like yeah. she's able to put herself into her shoes. Um, so then she's in the later episode, she's thinking about murdering all these people, and and uh, it's really getting to her. And um, and the lieutenant at the end as well has been in war, and just this idea of being in war and like having to find a way to carry on. Mm. Um, I thought it yeah it summarized that quite nicely at the end there when it's like violet's making a difference in other people's lives and yeah i don't know yeah no that was I, good i liked that i like i think that that moment landed but for the most part i think it that it tries it tries to be too, uh too beautiful it tries to be more beautiful than it has a right to be um it it, it hasn't earned the the too much polish not there's, enough. there's, there's just Right. All the sob stories that were given one after another after another sort of dulls my senses to them. Um, right. I, I liked, right. I liked right. Iris's episode because it was early on. We we we'd met that episode. Uh, we'd met that character and we cared about her a little bit. So when we heard her sob story about having poured her out to this fella and got rejected, yeah. we, we cared about it. And then like the next episode was the same thing, but for someone we hadn't met. And then the next episode was the same thing for, and for another guy we hadn't met. And, and it went on like that. And I was, and each episode had the same formula of look how beautiful we are. Look how look at these the lighting and the, the soft music that we're playing. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, they're they're in an arranged marriage or they're whatever. Yeah. He's not being accepted. And I and I feel like it's try it hasn't earned the right for that. It's just it it's trying too hard for that sort of stuff. You've given up. On <laughs> by now, like yeah. you're you're over it. You don't care what they say. Yeah. Sub stories are. I For care. Sure. I care. Like you said, I care about the the violet um, having emotional breakdown. The 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 story around Violet's shell shock, right? Um, and the story around the president uh, who's been in war and stuff like that. The people that just goes out and does like mindless tasks mm. and it's not <laughs> the characters' stories. And yeah. then there's Violet back at home and yeah. she's going through her stuff. Yeah. Do you know what? Yeah. It probably because it's because it's based on a light novel, which is kind of like a video game, right? Yeah. To like go out and meet people and right. like when you're playing it you're like fuck yeah I'm yeah. helping these people it feels so good yeah. and then you come back to the main story and you're like yeah but, like, like, but yeah. the pacing is probably dealt with a lot better because yeah. it's over the course of like 10 hours or, yeah. or like 20 yeah. hours instead of how many few yeah, hours yeah you don't want an hour game or two hour game yeah. just the main story yeah yeah um what were your favourite centipede moments 
for me it was when she was fighting uh, we saw the flashbacks of her as like a 10 12 year old or something fighting and she's doing it all with just the deadpan emotionless face and she's just slaughtering people she's she's running through them slitting throats and cutting Achilles tendons and throwing them over her shoulder and shit was with, with surprising 12 year old strength but but yeah it was just it was a uh, it was a good juxtaposition of seeing somebody doing this who is just absolute war machine and that's all she knows and she doesn't care at all for the people she hurts um juxtaposed with the fact that we then go back to present day and now now the feeling of oh shit I did these things and I'm an actual person and I should have felt bad for it I, I like that yeah um yeah I would, I would say the same 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 parts were um my favorite bit <laughs> <laughs> that's um, fine you can share a favorite bit yeah that, <laughs> <laughs> that just means more favorite bits for me <laughs> <laughs> um when the when they're at the when they've reached the cathedral and the um running throughout that and there's sort of um the enemies jumping out at random moments and um, i don't know there's um a lot of like just basically animation it's cool it was cool it was well done yeah it was when Violet Evergarden has the breakdown in her bedroom she's just like ah she's screaming and pounding the floor and stuff not when she tried to choke herself out but everything else the way that she was moving stuff was very right when she choked herself was that her trying to kill herself yeah yeah Yeah. I think so just, I've killed some people with my own hands I can kill myself with my own hands but that's just like not how asphyxiation works <laughs> you tend to pass out before you can finish the job it's fine <laughs> and then just let it put in the lock mode on yeah. the arms and then, right. and then yeah. it would have held on when she passes out would have been good uh, predictions I, I legitimately now think <laughs> actually that he's alive possible. and that he's working against the country that he was fighting for in the war oh right like he is in the anti-peace movement yeah what is what is an anti-peace movement they're against peace why would people be against peace well you know, we don't want to be at peace with you because we hate you <laughs> that's yeah. why they're against the peace that's between the two countries they're like oh fuck you you guys like butter on the bread side up we like butter on the bread side down <laughs> yeah I, I i did think we got in this episode that um that the war wasn't really won. It came to sort of a stalemate, kind mm. of a truce between them. Yeah. Um, I think that was mentioned once or twice that it's got sort of the outcome of the war. We did find out in Iris's episode as well, I just remembered, sorry, that the reason the war was fought was over minerals in a mountain. Yeah. That is like bordering the two countries yeah. and they were fighting over uh, yeah. like resource rights. Resources, yeah. Mm. And it came to sort of a stalemate. And then these anti peace movements are like, but we could win if we carried on fighting. Ah, maybe. Who knows? Probably more fleshed out in the white novel. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you think Gilbert's going to be working for them yes. as a, like an evil character, and then yeah. Violet will have to defeat him. Maybe. I don't know what. I, I don't know what his. I, I. I think. I don't know if she'll have to defeat him, but he'll be around. I don't think that's going to happen. I Definitely. Feel like he, well, I feel like Gilbert's body. alive because um, because of the lack of body. Um, how many episodes? We've got four episodes left. What's going to happen? There's going to be a second season, but I don't. I don't know if he'll show up in the season. I just know that he'll be around. What about Benedict's arc? Is he going to be wearing some different clothes at the end? He wants to be a doll the whole time, so right. he's going to dress up right. and oh, right. uh, be a doll. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. I can and see he'll that. Be, he'll, he'll wear a dress and everything, and he'll just oh. be like the, the, that character. Person. Yeah, he wants I reckon. To be a doll a yeah, I reckon that's going to happen. I agree. Um, but I don't agree with the Gilbert thing. I don't think he's going to... I think he is going to show up. Uh, I think Dietfried's going to get some sort of a, a mini character arc as well where he comes around to the idea of Violet and sort of forgives her for the steeds she's done. I don't understand his character. He he discovered her on his boat. Yeah. Killing him. Yeah. And then he's like, "This will she'll make a great gift for my brother. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he he recognises that she's an emotionless war machine who does what she's told and, and is very efficient at it. So yeah. he goes, all right. I could kill her, but then I'd be cutting the nose off to spite my face. I could also just turn her to our side, and she'd be a fantastic, um, uh, fantastic effect for our our uh, war efforts. But I won't like her. I won't like her. <laughs> no, <laughs> she's killed my men. But I can use her. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm a, I'm a so he's, he's a military man. man. Yeah, he's a military yeah. man. He can yeah. he can acknowledge that she's right. um, she's a benefit to the war war effort. All right. Do you have any predictions? Um predictions i think gilbert's alive somehow i really like the idea that he's in this anti-peace movement um just because it's true (laughs) everybody knows that you like things that are true (laughs) um 
yeah no no real i violet um i don't see her really progressing much further um maybe she learns a new emotion um, <laughs> happiness. Like Pokemon. i was just gonna say happiness. violet trying to learn happiness <laughs> oh man that would be funny uh let's move on to a we even review As always, for Weeben Review, we talk to Curtis. What have, what have you been up to this week? Um, not much. <laughs> Finish Neon Genesis yet? No. <laughs> it doesn't take that long. A long <laughs> 23 minute episode. <laughs> as opposed to short 23 minute episodes. <laughs> there is a movie as well. No, I get that though. That there are some 23 minute episodes that are longer than others. <laughs> like, like it just feels that way when you're watching them yeah. like like dbz is it, it can be oh. quite a shot but it feels like a long time because <laughs> be yeah. yeah. you can because it's tedious to watch but if you decide that you're going to do something else while you're watching right, it, right. time passes quicker right so. i go first this time what um what did i watch i watched another couple of episodes of kobayashi's made uh, dragon maid i still i actually i still kind of like the show i still like it it's starting to lose you again. Um, <laughs> Going on a roller coaster. Yeah, they just they did a little thing that I liked, um, but they started sexualizing kids, like really young kids. And I don't mm. like that. Um, so there's uh, there's the little um, Kana dragon. I mean, she's a dragon, so she's old as fuck. That's how I find they tend to get around it. No, 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 no. I haven't finished. No, no. Yeah, I haven't no, finished. Yeah. Um, she wants to go to school. I think I mentioned she had her first day at school, mm. and she just wants to like live with humans more and stuff. But there's a, like a little girl in her class who must be like I don't know five or something who really really likes Kana and every time she touches she's like she thinks she's super cute and she she wants to be her best friend she loves her and then uh, Kana she asks Kana if she wants to come around to her house to play and I'm like okay and it's 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 way more sexualized than I would feel comfortable with and then like um Kana is not as oblivious to all of it she doesn't give a shit but the other girl is like oh she's so close to me and it's like five. Um, <laughs> this is a five-year-old human. Five-year-old human and right. a I don't know how old dragon who looks like a five-year-old. Kid. Right. Yeah. Um, and then, and then, Connor is like pins her to the ground. Like I want to, and then like somebody else comes in and interrupts her. And then like later that night, the five-year-old's like, "What does she want to do to me?" And they've censored it out of the sub so i went digging to try and find like what she wanted to do to that girl <laughs> she wanted to lick her and they've established that dragons lick each other to clean each other but in their dragon forms not right when they're right. because there's like a misconception in a, an earlier episode where right. kobayashi oh no uh, toru was like oh yeah we lick each other to clean each other and kobayashi's mind goes to like a lewd place where they're licking each other naked but it's like no when they're in the dragon form it was weird mm, it was too right. sexual and yeah. then and then <laughs> Uh, the really big titted uh, Quetzalcoatl um, also decides to live in the humans. No, there's a little wizard, who, a mage, who's practicing magic and he's trying to summon a demon. And she's like, oh, it's a child using a summoning circle. And so she jumps through the summoning circle and he thinks that she's a demon, but she went through the portal so that a demon wouldn't go through the portal. And his name is Shota. And she calls him Shota Kun, which is a play on Shota Khan, which is like attracted to little boys. And she's all like, oh, let me show you I'm not a demon. Let me bath with you and stuff. It's just, didn't enjoy any of that. But right. everything else, <laughs> I enjoyed. But it was, I, uh, yeah. It, just, it was just weird. Creepy choices. Creepy choices. Um, what else did I watch? I finished watching uh, True Detective. Um, that had a disappointing ending. Uh yeah. That's not anime. That's not anime. Right. Robert got to talk about stuff that wasn't anime. No, 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 no. no mine was relevant. <laughs> I'm not calling you out for what was relevant. What was your relevant thing? It was it was uh, Red Dwarf because you said things that we like that aren't that well, I trash. Watched, fine. No, 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 no. I, I wasn't. I, I wasn't calling you out for like. <laughs> I'm, watching I'm anime. calling you out, Ro- Robert. Um, this is True Detective with Matthew McConaughey. The yes. first season, yeah. Is, yeah, yeah, yeah. I agreed though at a disappointing ending. Oh. I was really looking forward to the HP Lovecraft stuff that it was setting up because yeah. it doesn't yeah. it doesn't say yeah. that it's HP Lovecraft, but if you know HP Lovecraft, right. it's like yeah. holy shit, are you right. kidding? Right. And then there's no payoff, yeah. and right. that was what was really interesting to me. <laughs> I'm sure that it's, it's, it's like it ends up being just a passable cop drama, okay. yeah, which was super disappointing. You wanted to go fully into that. It was it was uh, yeah, it set it up and then it didn't pay off. And then what else did I watch? 
I started watching the first Gundam movie, but it's really dense because it's like the first 26 episodes of the original um, Mobile, Suit Gun- Mobile Suit Gundam um, compacted into a two hour movie. Right. So I've decided I'm going to watch it in like half hour bursts because it's, right. it's really dense. And it's yeah. quite old. It's like in the late 80s. Um, but that's me getting into the Gundam train. Do you and like Gundam? I've never, I have no experience with Gundam. All my mech shows from my childhood are like Neon Genesis and yep. uh, Zoids. Right, yeah. Which are technically mechs. You ride around with them, they just look like animals. Um, <laughs> but I have no experience with Gundam. Um, yeah. And that's like the quintessential mecha show. Yeah. That or Mazinga, but Mazinga is uh, super robot, not real robot. Okay. Which is where they fight, like, you know, alien forces and mm. stuff. Right. Mazinga is written by the same guy uh, who wrote Devil Man. Cry baby, Devil Man specifically. You know Devil Man? No. We'll move on. Okay. <laughs> talk about that later. Um, yeah. I, oh, and I've been playing a heap of Yakuza, and I really wish that I could talk about it because it's very Japanese and some crazy stuff happened. But does it not count as anime? Is it not animated? It's, it's not. An, it's not. I wouldn't call it. It has. It has anime aesthetics, but I don't think you could class it as anime. It's just okay. So there's okay. No, there's, I'll tell you one story from Yakuza. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. back in those two, who don't know, I don't think we've. Um, said yakuza's japanese mafia people no, know that one just in case yeah, right, yeah just in right. case um so you just come out of prison after 10 years yakuza drama going on with right. like people being killed there's 10 billion yen that's gone missing and you and this orphan girl are at the center of it but in between the main story you can just wander around this neighborhood and people just kind of ask you for help and yeah. um you just help people Right. because you're a good guy that's the thing you know in gta like there's that whole dissonance between the story of you trying to believe that this person's good when you can just like run run over yeah. hookers and stuff yeah you can't hurt people on the street in yakuza how does that how do they mechanically work just, that into the game you just can't hurt them you can't throw punches unless you're uh, into can a you fight drive a car? no you can't drive a car okay, it's like right. a walking district okay right, um, right, but right, if right, you could right. presumably they would just like make you slow down when you get to okay. cars and stuff sure. um but you can stop people from being, getting mugged. And if you bump into another Yakuza, they'll be like, Ugh! and then you fight them, you beat the shit <laughs> out of them, and then they give you money it's to say sorry. Okay, <laughs> it's wow. a good way of getting money. Um, <laughs> but the story that I wanted to share, that is just like, it was so bizarre. I had such a good time with it. I beat it last night. Um, so you go to like an RC car racing track that you used to go to back in the 80s. Yeah. And the guy who was working there part-time as the announcer is still working there, and he's like 50. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he's like, I'm engaged. And you're like, that's cool. I don't know how that happened, but cool. And he's like, yeah, but my wages, I'm still on only on part-time wages. And my wife's dad wants me to go and learn how to take over the business. I'm passionate about RC car racing that I can't <laughs> just leave my job. And I don't want to just give this job to some rando who doesn't care about RC car racing. I need to find a successor. Right. So you're like, cool. So you go find these kids who used to play when they were young and the girl is really obsessed with you because you have a really cool RC car because you start racing there. Um, <laughs> And the, so the girl thinks you're really cool because you have a super fast RC car. And the guy's like, I, I know who would be a good successor, but I'm not going to tell you unless you can beat me in a race. And so you race him and you smash him. He wants to, he, he loved RC car racing so much that he wanted to become a Formula One racer. And right. he just never could do it. He just, he fucked right. up real bad and didn't do it. So now he's working as, as a male escort. So oh, you can go wow. find him okay. and he's, he's a pretty successful male escort, but he's not happy. <laughs> right, so right. You try to talk to him and he's trying to talk to you really sensibly. He's like, no, look, like I'm getting paid pretty well and it's, right. it's okay. And you're like, huh, let your car do the talking. And then you walk off <laughs> and then you go to the RC car place <laughs> and, he's there. And, and he's there and then you race him. And yeah. he's like, I love it. I love it. <laughs> I've missed this so much. Can I please be the successor? <laughs> and so he leaves his well-paid escort job Whoa. to be a part-time <laughs> commentator at this like That's little great. RC track place. Great. It was so convoluted. But yeah, everybody, and uh, then like, it does the thing where all the characters that are involved in the story kind of like walk off to the side and they're talking about, you know, RC car racing and commentating and the main character is like, man, all this after just this little RC car really makes you think. <laughs> and then he walks off. It was, it was the best vignette. It was so, ah, oh, so stupid and so good. It, I think great. if you gave me like, a hundred years to come up with different stories for a Yakuza <laughs> themed That's game. That's the thing. Right. I wouldn't have come up right. with That's any of those yeah. elements. I yeah. love it so much. I love it. Oh man, there's there's so many, all the little sub stories. Yeah. Oh, not all of them. Some of them are kind of shit. But so, they're just, they're so, like there's one girl and she's like, matches, matches for sale. And you're like, I have a lighter. <laughs> Why are you selling matches? She's like, oh, 
well, seeing as you're here, she's like, my, my <laughs> family runs a matchmaking business and it's not doing very well. And I stole these from my dad so that I could buy my new boyfriend a, pre- a, a Christmas present because it's Christmas as well. Um, <laughs> right. And so you agree to help her sell matches. And then the next time you see her, she's like, I really need to go to the bathroom. Can you hold my matches? Oh, I brought this up already. Yeah. And then you help you help her sell matches and then this guy thinks that you're selling drugs. <laughs> but then when you come back later on, the match sales have gone through the roof <laughs> like they're a hot commodity in the town now because everybody's yeah, like really this one guy man. walked into a club and was just really adamant about how cool these <laughs> matches were so you help her family's match making business take off that's awesome oh, I love this game so much I'm, I'm like not even halfway through the main story because I keep getting distracted with all the little weird interactions right. that you have with people yeah um, what about ah oh, you want to keep it short so <laughs> Keep it relatively short. No, you can ask. No, ask a question. I was just gonna say, what about um, like, the main story? <laughs> oh, the, the main the main story is compelling. Yeah. Um, yeah. but I mean, you'll be walking down the street and somebody will bump into you. Yeah. And they will like mug you or scam you or they'll drop something or like the, or somebody will be like, oh, can you help me with? So I'm just constantly getting distracted with it. <laughs> right, but okay. I've gotten to the point now where I've done like 75% of the sub stories. So there are less and less of them to distract me. And so I can kind of focus on the main story a bit more. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, the main story is definitely compelling. All the characters are super interesting. Yeah. There's like, they just, they just, so it's all this Yakuza stuff going on and the cops. And now they've thrown in the Chinese triad. Oh, wow. I'm like, holy <laughs> shit. What's going to happen? Um, yeah. yeah, it, I'll keep you updated with my Yakuza <laughs> journey cool. if there's any other like outstanding side stories. Yeah. Anyways, Robert, what have you? Um, so I watched I watched the first episode of the the one that Joel had watched and realised why he was having such a hard time with it. Um, but what I what I wanted to ask you guys is, they like, do I do I need to continue? With no, 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 <laughs> do no, I, no, no. Is there more like iconic episodes that I need to watch to, before I can say that I've okay. watched Yu Gi Oh? I thought that you were going to ask this when... because, like, with Dragon Ball Z, we we stopped after the freezer, and I feel like I get it, right? I feel like I get Dragon Ball Z. With Digimon, I watched one episode, and I feel like I get it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> when, with with Yu Gi Oh, I'm not sure if I get it or not because it's so kind of. There's some episodes that didn't have any cards involved. And some no, 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 no. And stuff, that, so I, I wanted to that first episode. That is Yu Gi Oh. Right. That is the Yu Gi Oh. Grew up with that old. I watched that old one that yeah. you were watching as well. Yeah. That's fucking nuts. I have no <laughs> honestly. Right. They play a different right. game every single episode, basically. Like, they don't consistently play Dungeon Monsters. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's bizarre. Yeah. The yeah. Yami game. The, the Pharaoh just plays at, like, whatever game he thinks oh, of. Oh, that was what like you were talking about with, Which, like, um, the finger. Yeah, you choose a finger right. to, to pull to use, and he chooses trigger finger and that. i choose my thumb okay uh, in the yeah. first episode he he like slid them slid a pack of regular cards down the side of a mountain uh, down the side of like a, a domed building yeah and they were both hanging off the building by a rope yeah and he and they had to turn over cards and to go just normal and just cards. different stuff and then the third episode was the uh them playing monsters and i figured i didn't watch past there but i figured that, that then they would just carry on with monsters yeah so, i had um, a quick browse through those it, yeah episodes. it was different so the so, third so, <laughs> ignore all of that that's that's not all of that that's not Yu-Gi-Oh that's not even that's not even the anything um, and the Yu-Gi-Oh that's on Netflix the reboot one that made it to the west d- yeah. with that with, with that only one episode that I've watched of yeah. that I would I, say that you get it I, th- I say that I get it I would it. say that you get it because it carries on in that same fashion yeah yeah except okay so um, I think in the next episode mm. um, so they go to um, okay I'll, I'll, I'll summarize for you so that you have a bit of context yeah. um, but so really quickly uh Yugi gets, uh, I think it shows at the end of the first arc. Right. Okay. He hears that somebody has Exodia. Right. And he's like, okay, I want to have a big tournament on my island um, where all these people come to fight. And it's like, it's a huge, huge tournament arc. Um, he, Yugi gets invited through a VHS. Right, right. So he gets sent to VHS. <laughs> and that, that's how old it is. And he declines. He's like, do you think you, people, they're all like in the room. They're like, do you think you'll go? He's like, nah. And then he goes, in case you think that you won't go, <laughs> as if he was listening, and then right. uh, Yugi's grandpa gets sucked into the TV. What? That's right. Yeah. yeah. What? yeah. And he's like, <laughs> Yugi! <laughs> what? Um, his grandpa is sucked and stuck in the television, and, and not like like behind, like he's in, in some weird yeah. TV space. And then Maximilian Pegasus is like, if you want to get your grandfather out of here, you have to defeat me oh, in Christ. Dungeon Monsters. <laughs> All right. And so he has to go to the, um, to, 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 I think it's Duelist Island. It's a, right. like you, it's, a, it's a whole thing where like <laughs> rents out an entire island for people to play oh, man. card battles on. Anyways, so um, 
the next episode, they're on the boat going to Duelist Island, and like Joey somehow gets invi- invited as well. I don't know how he gets invited, and then Tristan right. and Mia also just they go. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, but some kid walks up to Yugi and is like, ah, "Here's it. You had Exodia." And he's like, "Yeah, look," and he just throws it over si- over the side of the boat. But not Yugi, the kid. The kid's yeah, like, yeah, "Can yeah, I yeah. see?" And yeah. then and so Exodia is gone now. Exodia is never in the series again. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because it's overpowered. It's fucking yeah. ridiculous. Well, I, I was thinking that. In the first episode, he's like, Dragon, what? What, Blue Eyes White Dragon's the most powerful card in existence, uh, and, it's and there's only four of them, and I now have all four of them. Yeah. And Oh, and there's actually another more. There's a role just been <laughs> out there in the first episode. Every episode re- revolves around a duel yeah. versus someone, and it's like climbing the ladder. And each episode, they, like, I know I said last episode that this was the most powerful card. No, 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 this no. Is it's, not, it's not quite like that. It's <laughs> more like I'm using this, it's supposed to be like, I have a very powerful card that I use in an interesting way. Like, there's this one girl, I can't remember her name, I think it was Mai. Like, I know if it's May, but it's sort of Mai. She, um, she pretends to be a psychic, but she's perfumed all of her cards so that she knows what card she's going to oh. draw, and it fucks with people. Her deck revolves around that harpy cards. She has a bunch of harpy based cards and they all just synergize really well together. Right. So there is some of that. Okay. But I mean, even in that first episode, it, it, it doesn't show how the actual card game works. They're just playing cards as they draw them. Like, I think he draws that guardian on the horse. Yeah. You need to sacrifice two cards to play that. Um. And then they're, they're, they're it's going back and forth. They're just playing a monster and attacking. And then for some reason, Yugi gets, like, plays three monsters and Seto Kaiba just doesn't play any more monsters for his turns. <laughs> like, it's not a good representation of the actual oh, card right. game until they get to, I think, the third arc, and it's like Jewelist City, and then right. it actually starts following the rules oh, of Don- okay. Dungeon Monsters. Right. But until then, it's just fucking Kangaroo Court. My card does this! Yeah. And yeah. it's like, no, it doesn't. Most of it's just, they, they do that thing of Yu-Gi-Oh's losing, right? Yeah. And then he's like, I gotta trust. The heart of the cards. The cards. The and then he draws the card he needs. And, he and it's not cards. like an instant win it's just a very useful card for the situation that he's in yeah Man, this sounds really boring it's fucked yeah. um, yeah. is it worth jumping to that third arc where they start to actually follow the um, I remember this, the plot being way more convoluted because okay so you know how there's the guy with the gold eye mm. and there's uh, Yugi has that gold necklace yeah. it, the plot ends up the macro plot of, plot of the whole story ends up being there's like 12 or so Egyptian items yeah. that all have some magical power right. Right. and one guy wants to get them all and he's got the three Egyptian god cards and it's like who's printing this game? <laughs> right. Like this, yeah. is, this is a game you can buy yeah. who gave this guy these cards? Isn't there a company that Oh that there is the in cards? real life there are No no in the game Isn't that what um, Yeah yeah Maximilian Pegasus is the guy who made the game but right. he like he gets his eye removed at the end of that uh, mm, to- yeah. tournament island Yeah so if he's making them, why did he give like the three most ridiculous cards to this one guy? It's fucked. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't Anyways, work. um, I, I would say it's more interesting. But if you really want to like get into Yu Gi Oh, I would play the game. I, the game is actually really fun. I really regret not having any cards anymore. <laughs> but you could get like a, a Game Boy Advance emulator, and I think uh, Yu Gi Oh Tournament two thousand four for the Game Boy Advance. <laughs> That's a top quality Yu Gi Oh game. Right. But the other thing is that it doesn't really capture and. I think if you, if you, uh, I'm just going to end up ripping from, my uh, mother's basement did like a, the problem with TCG animes, trading card game animes. Right. And it's that they don't really capture what's fun about playing the game. They focus too much on the bullshit of like, right. oh, <laughs> I play this card. Monsters. Monsters. And, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. The, the interesting thing about playing games is the like, the actual mechanics of it. And he right. was, he was way more into it than I ever was. Apparently if you do tournaments, you do best of three yeah. and you have your main deck and then you have, 15 other cards that you can swap out of your deck when you're playing best of three so like you know you play against somebody and they counter some of your cards you have some cards that you can that kind of stuff is cool right. trading card games are cool they're just really expensive and i never got in the yeah. past so yeah. anyways we'll move on no more Yu-Gi-Oh. um devil's is part time i'm still watching that I've, i'm almost at the end now um not much more to how say many about episodes it. is that is it 12 uh it's 13 i think just taking your time yeah i've been i've not had time this week and last week i watched all the other things <laughs> yeah. so, so um yeah i watched a couple more episodes this week uh they talk about organic coffee and, and the yeah. devil's like it's made from ogres interesting <laughs> i wonder if we can employ that at mcdonald's yeah. um, <laughs> uh, and, and then they they go to a, like a zoo um i also watched an animated thing that's not uh from japan it's from canada but it, um it was worth mentioning because i watched the entire season of it on netflix it's called the hollow um it's real simple it's just uh, three three guys three uh teenagers wake up in a room 
and they've got complete full amnesia and they don't know who they are and everything and they gradually learn that they've got superpowers and then as they escape from this puzzle room they realize that they're in like a fantasy world uh, and they meet the devil and they meet like um, Hell yeah. they meet like uh, the four horsemen of the apocalypse and stuff it's it's quite fun it's right. got a really disappointing uh, last few minutes of the last <sighs> episode when it Fuck. Why can't people just happens. finish? Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> it's either either they drag it to the point where it's dead, and then yeah. they keep dragging it, or they're like, "Oh, we don't know how to wrap it up," and then they fuck it up, and they're like, either the last episode or the last few minutes it happens all the time. Um, I wanted to ask for uh, this coming week. What mm. what what else? What else do I need to? What's really iconic that most people have seen oh, or man. heard of okay, that, so I haven't, that I haven't seen or heard of. You've yet. seen Pokemon, right? Po- I've seen Pokemon and okay. I've played enough of the, the video, the, the uh, Game Boy games okay. of Pokemon that I feel I can get that. Okay, Pokemon. Um, okay, uh, do you just want to watch kids shows? I mean, anything that's like really iconic that I feel like I should know. Sailor, I should Mo- Sailor Moon, you should definitely oh, check yeah, out. Sailor Moon. Oh, check out some chick ones. Some chick ones. Check out some uh, shoujo shows. Right. Sailor Moon is a big one. Sailor Moon. And don't watch Sailor Moon Crystal because that's the same issue. Oh, that's worse than Dragon Ball Z Kai, apparently. Just watch the OG Sailor Moon. Right. And watch... You could probably get away with the dub because the dub has the really iconic... Fight an evil by moonlight Something, something by daylight <laughs> Rest of the lyrics, they go right here na, 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 Sailor Moon nice. Check out that, that one. Um... <laughs> I'll do that. And also Card Captor Sakura, which also uh, got not a remake but a reboot, which is really weird. Card Captor. Captor. Sakura. Sakura. I don't think I've. I, I card really Captor Sakura. So it's. I actually watched that growing up. I watched everything from right. that show. Um, that is, so they're both magical girl shows. I think Card Captor is better than Sailor Moon. Fuck you, fight me. Um, but that one is about a girl who. I can't remember what instigates it, so you have to fill me in. But she has a friend who is a very, very good seamstress <laughs> who always makes the right costumes for the event. She doesn't actually, like, you know, she doesn't do a transformation, but she's got a friend who's a seamstress mm. who makes her clothes that just work for the situation. Like, <laughs> this this dress is resistant against fire, <laughs> which is great. Kind of like a Q from... Yeah, I was yeah, just yeah. about to say that, yeah. Um, never, never gives them the thing that they don't actually need. She um, there's a bunch of mystical ancient cards that are spread around the city, and when they get activated, they summon either like a monster or something bad that she then doesn't have to fight always, but like solve a puzzle. But there's one that's just mirrors, and she has to do something. It's very hazy. I remember because there's an overarching thing with like angels and stuff. It's it was a good time. I remember it. Um, I'll check them out. Those two, for sure. Um, and then if you want to check out another third one, if you have time, Metabots, which we fucked around with. The you saying Metabots? Metabots. <laughs> that was really good. I really, really enjoyed Metabots growing up. Um, and then we can maybe think about adult stuff. But the thing is, that okay. comes into recommendations. That's enough. <laughs> That's enough. Um, we've already asked Curtis if he's weaved anything. Um, should I do a recommendation? Sure. What should I recommend? What kind of show? Some sort of a TV show. That's a good um, start. Okay. I think I talked about this on the UT Under the Katatsu episode that we did um, when I was like explaining some of the genres and stuff. And I actually... See, okay, this is the thing. I said that Tinker Top and Gurren Lagann has like relative, well, a moderate popularity. It's really highly ranked on Mal, so I don't know what the fuck I was talking about. <laughs> I don't know if Mal is even a good indicator of how popular a show is. I feel mm. like it must be because... Right. Or popular within an online anime community. Yeah. Anyways, the point is, I want to recommend Monster. So, I've definitely given the premise for the show already, but just in case you haven't listened to that episode, I'll give it again. Um, it's based on a manga, I haven't read the manga, but the show I feel like is very good, it's quite long, 64 episodes, um, it is about a Japanese brain surgeon in Germany, and he's the stellar brain surgeon, he's dating the daughter of the man who owns the hospital, and he's set to take over the hospital, um, he is excellent at his job, he's very successful, he's super happy-ish, um, and then one day, uh, there's been a home invasion, 
and the two parents have been shot dead and one of the twins has been shot in the head and he's running into the brain surgery this kid and then uh, a world famous pianist has just been in a car accident and they're like we have to get you on to him because it'll make the hospital look really good and he pauses and he's like all lives are worth the same and then he goes and he fixes up the kid and the pianist dies uh, We've definitely talked about this. Definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. During the UTK, I'm during pretty UTK sure. Yeah, yeah. Good. I'm just, I'm, I'm no, doing it just in case people yeah, have missed right. it. Anyways, long story short, the kid who he saves ends up being a psychopath. Yeah. And um, kills the three leaders of the hospital, like the guy who owns it, the head director, and somebody else, and frames the guy who saved him wow. for seemingly no reason. This guy, this kid's like eight. Wow. Um, and uh, so the series follows like it does a ten year time jump. Dr. Tenma has been, like, traveling around Germany trying to find where this kid has gone because he just disappears from the hospital um, and training and hiding from the police because the police think that he's a serial killer now. I didn't kill my wife. I don't care. Who's that? The uh, Fugitive. Yeah. You haven't yeah. seen that movie? <laughs> Frame for killing his wife. Never mind. Yeah. Um, but it it's amazing. It's really slow-paced, so if you don't like stuff that's slow-paced, it won't, won't be good for you. Um, but... It's, it's got because Dr. Tim's whole thing is, is like he he's setting out to kill this kid because he learns more about him and he's like this I can't let this guy live but right, also he's his, created a monster he's created, he's created a monster but his whole thing is like every life is valuable and there's a bunch of not I wouldn't call them filler but he, he's chasing this guy and like I've heard he's in this city and he chases him and then he something fucked is happening in the city and he's like I'm a doctor first right. so he starts helping like local hospitals and that's all like local not hospitals, but, you know, like, she, he, there's one part where he meets, like, uh, a Vietnamese community in, uh, I think, Leipzig. That might be the wrong city. But they're, like, we're all illegal immigrants, and so we have shit right. healthcare. And so he stays there for, like, a month, tending to a bunch of people and clearing their backlog of patients. Yeah. Because that's how it works. <laughs> um, but it's, it's really good. So And, like, there's the subplot of you find out that the twins were, like, raised in a Nazi camp where they were trying to raise the next Hitler. Oh, like Jesus. after World War Two, <laughs> and there's this whole subplot of like post communist post World War Two communist Germany doing really dodgy stuff with kids um, right. to try and come back and take over the West. Is that actually what? The- <laughs> yeah, that's actually what it is. Like they they thought they were raising yeah, like, this- raising the next Hitler. Yeah, <laughs> they, or they say, they say Führer. Really? Yeah. Wow, really? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's a it's it's so good. It's yeah. so so good. Yeah. Um, he meets a bunch of crazy characters along the way. It's really slow, and, and then you just you you he has these interactions every few epi- every like twenty episodes or so with this monster that he's created, and they're amazingly well written. They're right. so good, and there are some arcs where the, you see more of the monster than you do of Tenma, even though he's the main character. Like you see what the monster is. It's fucking good. It's it's yeah. Sounds good. Uh, and then his sister is also involved. The twin. She doesn't go away. She comes back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she has her own arc and she's cool as well but she's not this, like the best part of the show so it did, does it ever come into it who killed who killed his parents and that? Yeah, yeah 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 yeah. that gets that, all that stuff gets answered and more there's right. like crazy cool twists at the end nice. cool. I love it um yeah so check out Monsters from 2004 yeah. I think what would you rate that uh either like a 9 I, th- I would rate it a 9 I think that wow. so, sometimes the slow pacing is to its detriment mm, right because it'll be like ramping up ramping up ramping up and then it will cut to people that you met like at the beginning of the show that were incidental characters and what they're up to in the Czech Republic right. <laughs> um, and and it ends up being important but at the, at the time you're just like oh fucking like I just I want that good <laughs> shit <laughs> but it all pays off in the end I, I, the, the la- yeah it edg- that's what, that's a good edging show because you're like getting edged um, and the other thing is and this is just me being like a a purist not an anime purist but it would be really cool if it was in German I would love to see a German right, dub yeah. of this because it's all set in Germany because um, right. when they go to the Czech Republic everybody speaks Czech that's, oh. that's the name of the language I think it is uh, yeah I think so yeah so everybody in there, there speaks Czech but right. everybody else speaks Japanese which is like weird yeah and yeah, there's yeah, English yeah. in it as well anyways yeah. it's a good show check it out cool. this has been <laughs> Keep Your Friends Close and Your Anime is Closer a podcast where we I don't need to say what we do at the end, right? People, if they listen yeah. to this part, they get <laughs> the gist. Surely they know what this podcast was about. Um, if you want to write in and let us know what you think, whether you're a friend or a foe, you can do so at kyfcayac 
at gmail.com. That's a tongue twister every time. Um, or keep your friends close and your animes closer on just any social media you can think of. Uh, we're, we're podcasts and distributed. Um, next week, we will be watching our final batch of Violet Evergarden. We're going to watch the last four, including the, so that's including the OVA. Yeah, mm-hmm. cool, yep. cool, cool. And then uh, after that, we're going to watch a movie before going into... I guess season three, or is, mm-hmm. this, or is this all season two? Is this like the nah, second season arc? Season three is just season two is real short. Okay. <laughs> That's fair enough. It's, we didn't get enough funding to do a, <laughs> to do a, a full season. season. It was a bottle <laughs> season. Check us out next week. But until next week, I've been your anime FIFA captain, Joel. I was your anime incompetent, but still good enough to get into FIFA soccer player, Robert. Mm, I was your anime soccer. Be honest. <laughs> uh... It's the end of the episode. (laughs) 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 That's good. Anyway, <laughs> so the question is, what is the age of a child that you think you could beat with a hundred percent certainty? Like, on um, just like so somebody throws a random seven-year-old at you, right. eight-year-old. Yeah. Okay. Well, I remember being about twelve or thirteen, and a friend of mine was probably like five foot ten or something like that. That's insane. And he grew to be like over six foot. Yeah. No, I think um, we've rolled out the double digits. He was huge. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, there are some. There are. I, I could take most. I think I could take most thirteen-year-olds, but, but the there, question, are, there yeah. are more and more of them as as the age goes. The more and more of the probability that a random one would it actually be, be you have to be pecking with like this is a hundred percent certainty that I could, <laughs> I could not kill, <laughs> but I could defeat defeat. <laughs> there, there we go. I could defeat this child in combat. Okay. So what's your age? My one's eight. Robert's seven because he's a pussy. <laughs> no, I said I could defeat that seven-year-old, that particular seven-year-old. No, I think my age is ten. I don't think there's any ten-year-olds who could kick my ass. Yeah, I, I would say around ten. I don't think there's any. I thought we talked about it, and I thought you were on like seven or eight, and that made, I remember being one. Maybe year I was. Old maybe I've got more confidence. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> one kid. You were like, if this is the average, <laughs> this is the average. Yeah. <laughs> gladiator, and like, is this the best you have? Actually, nah. There's some freaky, like talented people out there. Yeah, eight does seem more reasonable. Yeah, it does, but yeah. like a nine, maybe not. Anyways, we'll move on now. <laughs> um-